Filio. He's from Menda Baseball. He's a Division One baseball player at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Talented kid, and he's trained me off and on since 2015. So he was a freshman in high school. So I'm really excited for this conversation. Mike, so let's talk about your, kind of your baseball career. Like, we'll start there. High school, what was high school baseball like for you? Sure. So, I mean, high school baseball for me was kind of a lot of ups and downs. You know, I was with my dad a lot, um, starting off training, especially even in eighth grade, um, kind of preparing for, you know, high school, getting into it. He was kind of the one who set me up and got me into that mindset of, you know, competitive baseball. Um, and I always kind of noticed that I had a little bit of a leg up around most of the guys I was playing with. Um, Definitely not a full player. I had a little, like tools were some kind of a little bit above everybody else um, in some aspects of it, but I knew I was always missing kind of, you know, the rhythm um, kind of more strength wise. So I wanted to kind of focus on that. Um, and so when I came here early on, you know, that was kind of my main goal of just, you know, getting a little bit better than everybody else um, in, you know, the aspects that I wasn't too so strong in. Um, and so going up through high well, I'll school. I'll say from a, from a coach standpoint, you stuck out early mm -hmm. of being like, this kid's athletic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So from just a baseball standpoint, though, before we get into training, yeah. how'd your high school career go from a baseball standpoint? You had a pretty good career. Obviously. Yeah, um, so my freshman year, we had actually nine guys in our freshman team, so we weren't able to move anybody around. Yeah, um, yeah so it was, it was tough. The, co the high school coach came to me, he's like, listen, I'd love to move you up to either JV or varsity, but if I move you up, we won't have a freshman team. Right. So it's very right. tough to you know, um, kind of weigh those options. So I stuck with my freshman team and that honestly ended up being one of my favorite years just because, you know, I got to relax. I was on the freshman team with all my friends. I was able just to, you know, go out and play baseball. Right. And so that was where I kind of got the greater appreciation of, you know, it's just, it's a game, you know, I can't take it too seriously. Um, and then moving on to my junior uh, or my sophomore, junior and senior year, I was on varsity all the years. Um, I started at second base my sophomore year um, and junior year as well with Jack Chernow, um, a fellow guy here. And, and then moving on to my senior year, um, I started my senior year as a shortstop. Um, and as the years went on, I progressively got better. Um, I was able to kind of, you know, fine tune my skills, um, connect with a lot more of the guys on there, especially when I was younger. I would have to, you know, compete with guys um, older, and that kind of really gave me more greater appreciation for. What was some of your? So I mean, you were you were a Division One recruit. So what was kind of your some of your stats your senior year? Like, how'd your senior year go? So my senior year, I batted I think a little below 330. Um, I had a couple errors on the season, so it was it was definitely my best year um, yeah. from that standpoint. Um, team didn't do so hot. It was probably one of our best years, but I mean, again, I was the only Division One recruit from our team right. um, in a couple years, so it was. It was tougher in that aspect, but again, it was, you know, going out and playing with a bunch of my friends, you know, just kind of sitting back and, you know, watching everything unfold in front of us with all of our training going through it. So it was, a, right. it was a really, really good year for us. So the goal was to always play college baseball, like you always had a passion? Always, yeah. I think it was kind of my freshman year. Um, my dad kind of tried to get me to go to some of the camps. I definitely went to um, Penn State the most because that's where my dad went. Right. Um, and so we had me... Even in eighth grade, he threw me out in one of the camps. He knew I wasn't going to get recruited in eighth grade or freshman year, but he just wanted to get me in front of coaches, get used to talking with people. Um, and so, but that was really, once I went to those camps, I kind of got a, a greater understanding for, all right, there's a whole other level on top of my high school career. I need, to, I need to train even harder. I need to get to that next level. I thought I was this good, but I need to be this good. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah. a totally another world. Eye opening um, for you. Very, very eye opening. Yeah. It was crazy to see, you know, being one of the best players in my hometown, you know, going out thinking, oh, well, I can really do this. I can compete with anybody. And then seeing, you know, juniors, seniors in high school and even guys in college at those camps just absolutely blowing me out of the water. Yeah. And it was just so eye opening and kind of scary at the same time because I've been training this much and realizing it's not even close to enough. <laughs> I have so much more down the road I remember, to do. I remember that, I remember that yeah. experience too, you know, from a basketball standpoint. You go and you compete against, you know, kind of be the locals or semi locals and you're one of the best players. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you get to that big, that big ocean. Yeah. And it's like, whew. You know, <laughs> There's a lot more play. fish out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely play. So, what brought you into training? So, you, I mean, you started when you were freshman. What brought you into this world of getting better in a performance sense, you mm -hmm. know, like really taking this serious? Because you were very consistent throughout your high school career. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, for my high school, they didn't really have too many tools. Um, a, a lot of the years, my sophomore year, we actually switched coaching careers so or coaching jobs. Um, so totally new coaching staff. So um, early on, it was very tough to find somebody consistently to work with me. I mean, my dad was always there for me, but, I mean, he didn't, he didn't really know anything close to you knew. Um, and so he was, you know, really to help me out with hitting, with throwing, but there was never, there was always something missing. It felt like I always had a little, a few tools that I was just, I had to refine and I had no idea how to do it. So it was, 
you know, finding Driven was just that, that key that opened it up and kind of let me loose and trying to figure out what I really was as a baseball player and an athlete. What, was, is it a, cause I feel like was, there's two mindsets. Like you automatically, like you gravitate, like this makes sense, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Was it a mindset piece? Because I see athletes who it's like they never make that connection, you know, it's like kind of like they're stuck in their own little box, their mm -hmm. own little world, you know, yeah. did it just, was it the sense of, I just want to be great and I'm willing to do whatever, you yeah. know, was it part of that, part of it, just kind of you always being coachable, like what, what drew you, because mm -hmm. why isn't everyone like that, yeah. you know? like why isn't it so clear for yeah. everybody else? I feel know? like it was a combo of a lot of things, you know, it was definitely be me being always trying to be very coachable, um, and I was fortunate enough to get around a lot of really good coaching um, in my high school career, but I also feel like it was just, you know, my, my love and grind to be the best at what I could do as, and being the best in the room, kind of. Right. Um, you know, being the best in the field, wherever it may be, in the weight room, on the field. And I realized going through high school that I, there were some points where I wasn't, and I needed, I needed that extra step. So I kind of just, I always had a little hole that I was just, I needed to fill. And there was, I knew there was something out there that I'd be able to fill it with. I just, I had to find it, and Driven ended up being that. So you fell, and then take it through, so, for your game, you know, you feel like this, this, this has helped you over the years. Talk about mm -hmm. that then, because if, if we have that yeah. hole we want to fill, how is this world of performance training, which you know so well, you got a good strength performance coach at your college mm -hmm. now, so you're not an yeah. amateur at all at any of this. You know, talk about that, how that's filled that gap, you know, filled the gaps yeah. in, in your world. So, I mean, there's always, I've always been able to, you know, get in the gym. I mean, I have a gym at home. I've always been able to do my own workouts, but I've. I feel like it was kind of just senseless. Like I'd go in there, I'd do a workout, I'd do bench, I'd do try, like it was just the standard type of working out and I felt like it was always missing something. It never got me to where I wanted to because I could always get stronger, bigger, but that never always correlates to baseball. You know, you don't have to be the biggest, the strongest. Like it's, there's so many different aspects of it. So I feel like Driven kind of combined all that, especially with the training at school. You know, it's, I see the exact type of stuff that we do here and I'm so fortunate for that, uh, that we finally found a really good training coach, but it's just, being able to tie everything together, getting the rhythm down, getting, you know, kind of just, you know, I, I don't want to say putting a pretty bow on top of it, but you know, it's just, it's bringing everything together yeah. that I've been training for. Makes sense. So how's your college career going now? So this will be your junior year. Talk yep. about the first couple. I know COVID's kind of put some wrinkles on it. Yeah. How's, it how's it been going? Sure. Um, so when I first came into college, um, my first fall freshman year, I had one of the best falls I've ever did. I batted a little over 400. Um, and they named me one of the captains on the team uh, my freshman year. So I was able to, you know, take in that role as a really young freshman, which is very, very tough. You know, being one of 40 guys and coming in as a freshman and being one of the guys that everyone's supposed to look up to. And you have three, you have guys three, four, five years older than you who are supposed to be looking up to you as a captain. Yeah. And that's, it's my first year away from home, not having any family. It's, it's was tough. Was it because of how you approach preparation that coaches noticed, you know, mm -hmm. is that what? They maybe want to change culture a little bit, elevate culture. Yeah. Like, let's elevate a talented, hungry, mm -hmm. knows how to work freshman, you know, yeah. to let everyone else know, like, hey, this is the new, the new normal here. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. That, 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 was, that was about? That was one of the biggest things because they, they really harped on I mean, they knew I had um, the skills it took to be a captain, but it was my leadership skills, my work preparation. So they kind of wanted to shove me, take me out of that freshman type role and put me in front of everybody on a big stage and say, look, this kid knows what he's doing. Yes, he's a great baseball player. Yes, he's still young, but he has the tools to become a great baseball player. Right. So he wants, this is what I want to kind of, not the role player, but he's got the types of tools where I want you guys to all follow in his footsteps, taking your own types of skills, whether you're a pitcher, catcher, infielder, outfielder, and kind of focusing on, you know, that type of work ethic. And you want to make a better program. Absolutely, you know, yeah. Like you want to make a better program. This mm -hmm. kid embodies the kind of program we want to create. Absolutely. He's a freshman, but who cares? You yeah. Know, it's college, you know, we're yeah. all grown-ups now. So mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the way. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So you've had um, two good seasons then, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Nice. What's next now? So you're entering your junior season. Mm -hmm. So what's next there? So I mean, what's next? I'm just I'm so excited to get back. You know, I've been still training. We got a couple of weeks left here, um, and we've got a one. Of, this is one of our first full seasons. You know, last year we had 40-ish games. We didn't have any midweek games. So this is the we have a 54 um, schedule or 54 game season this year. So this is our first since my freshman year that got cut short. That would have been a full season. This is our first full year. Um, so I'm very, very excited to get out there with our full team. We've got a bunch of new transfers coming in, so I think this would be our year out of anything. I feel like we've all been preparing enough. We've had a year under our belt without 
I mean, COVID's been a thing, but we've been able to get through that, get in the weight room, get outside with wearing masks and everything. So it's, it's definitely been the first year of full training where I think that we're com I'm confident enough in our team to How perform. How do you feel now you've had a great winter training for this, this training block here since, mm -hmm. since you've been home? How do you feel going into it now with all the work you've been putting in here? Are you feeling fast, explosive? Absolutely. You know? I, feel, I feel better now doing the work I've been doing for these last few weeks than I did my entire fall this last spring. Like, yes, our coaches and our training, um, our training coach has been doing the same type of stuff we have been here, but it's just, it's on another level. I can't really pinpoint what it would be. Maybe That's it's just the drive being <laughs> home. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It, it's tough. It's, yeah. it's very tough kind of, you know, honing in on that. I feel like... Whenever I'm doing something here, it's everything's refined, everything is specific and has a purpose for it. When I'm at school, most of the things we do have that. I mean, it's tough. Big weight rooms. With, I feel Huge. Like with yeah. College kids, you know, it's that like college strength coaches have a lot on their plate. You know, yes, they're, they're absolutely. Multiple teams. Mm -hmm. You know, big teams. Yeah. You know, 40 guys, 50 guys. You only see them. You know, maybe once or twice for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, here you're here. 90 minutes and I can be like, okay, this is for Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. So that's I'm glad you I'm glad you feel that because that's 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 kind of what I feel like I can help you. That yeah, can be a, a no, it's for, it's so know? much better because I mean, like you said, we have our strength coach. We have one strength coach now. We have an assistant who helps him out, but we have. 500 student athletes that he has to deal with, you know, right. multiple days a week. Every single team is in there almost every single day. So it's, you know, it's very hard. We only get an hour in there every day with our coach. We have 40 guys. We have 10 different racks that we have. So it's, yeah. he's just walking up and down, making sure, you know, the general picture, you know, he's right. not arching over when he's doing yeah, a back yeah, squat, yeah, yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, he's not, he's not walking up like you do and kind of, you know, stopping me, pausing me, telling me the technique behind it, why we need to be doing this, what it's going to help me out with. So it's, it's such a big difference being able to come in here and actually get the real work done. That's pretty cool. And that's kind of, the, that's, that's, that's awesome because, I mean, that's what I feel like my strength can be. Absolutely. That, like, you know, I can really, like, hone it in for Mike. And mm -hmm. I try to explain that to people is that, like, the difference here is that, like, I'm not on, I'm not, I'm not on University of Maryland's Baltimore's team. I'm on Mike's yeah. team. Yeah, 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 a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm on Team Mike. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So, team Mike does well at the University. Of, yeah, yeah that it works well. out. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, I did my part. But yeah. That's cool. Um, question I love asking because wisdom, you know, mm. you got it. You've been through. You've been through all of this. What would you say to young athletes, you know, about this world? You know, it's, tw it's 2022, mm -hmm. you know, like every athlete that cares about getting better, mm -hmm. it's like a no brainer of what, what they can accomplish here yeah. you know, for someone like you who's been through it, you know, sure. but yet I feel like it's so valuable to hear it from an older, wiser, you know, athlete who's been through the grind. What mm -hmm. would you say to some young athletes who are high school, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, young Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, just... You know, really trying to figure out what you really want to do. If you really want to train and push yourself to be the best you can absolutely be, I feel like getting into Driven would be the best thing for you. And I'm not just saying that because I've been going here for so long. I just, I've been here for so long. I know how it works. I know it really, really works because year and year, time and time after again, I come back, I put my work in, whether it's for a couple weeks or for a few months, and every single time I'm always happy with the outcome. Never one time I feel like, oh, well, Gary didn't really try this much this month. He's got a lot on his plate. That's yeah. that was never the case. Yeah. That was never the case. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad I was like that's like sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, what would you say to a young athlete about kind of the grind in general? Mm -hmm. You know, taking driven out of it. Yeah, you know, just sure. about getting better. You know, you got a young kid. You want to try to hype him up, give him some perspective. Sure. What do you say to him? I mean, if it's very very tough to kind of motivate somebody to get to that type of point, you just have to find it in yourself. It's gonna be very hard, whether for me to tell you something, you know, you have to do this, this, and this to be the best type of player, which is obviously not the case for a lot of people. You know, you have to find it within yourself to really compete and try and be the best person you can. And you have to take joy in being able to, you know, beat your best friend, whether it's your best friend or a guy you've never been around, you always have to take pride in, you know, beating everybody around you to try and be the best you can be. And that's, you have to try and find that inner fire. And once you do and you put it towards and you kind of apply yourself in the weight room or on the field, on the court, whatever the case may be, you will get so much more joy out of it knowing that you tried your 100% best and this is the best that you're putting forward. That's amazing advice, amazing advice. So wrap it off since I've known you for like, there's like a decade of just grinding. So cool to watch you compete, grind, get better. Now it's two more years of college ball. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but, hey, absolutely.